Hey, what is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief's Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osman, and I'm your Senior Enlisted Advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started today, I would love to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Leah Matthews and Julie Mitchell. How y'all doing? Hi, so good to see you. Hi, Chief. Hi, Leah. Oh, Hi, guys. Y'all doing all right? Yes, sir. Awesome. Doing great. Y'all ready for another Chief mm -hmm. Chat? I love You're Chief so Chat. so ready. <laughs> <laughs> well, today we have a wonderful guest that represents the backbone of every military service member, the military family. And without further ado, Julie, do you mind introducing today's guest? I am so excited to introduce today's guest. We're so lucky to have her with us today. She's going to have a lot of great information for our viewers. She has a servant's heart and she has let her passion for caring for others shine in both the private and public sector. She's also an active duty Marine spouse and she works to make military communities stronger as the Government Relations Deputy Director of the National Military Family Association. Please join us in welcoming Nicole Russell. Yay! Yay! Yeah, oh, no. cold, 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 cold. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Nicole, awesome. We are excited too. Thanks for taking time out to join us. And for everybody watching, drop a note in the comments. Let us know where you're watching from or if you have any questions for Nicole. We'll be reading those uh, live throughout the broadcast. Now's a good time to start your watch party and enjoy this live interview with your friends. And if you're not already following us, you should because Chief Chats are every Tuesday and Thursday. So you'll know who's coming up next. The great guests like Nicole. Awesome. Awesome. And Nicole, we are so excited to have you today. And uh, like we were talking before the, the, the chat went live, uh, I, I've never heard of uh, the National Military Family. Is it National Military Family Association? Yep, you got it. Or NMFA, as I like to, you know, just we all like our acronyms in the military oh, community, right? Oh, we do. Absolutely. And so I'm super excited to, to learn more about it and uh, get our viewers some more information about it. Uh, but before we start, can you tell us where you're calling us from? Absolutely. I am based in Alexandria, Virginia, calling you from my lovely dining room. Uh, <laughs> this is also where the National Military Family Association is headquartered. Alexandria, Virginia, not my dining room. <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, but we actually have um, uh, some of my coworkers are spread all across the country. Awesome. So why don't you go ahead and tell us about the National Military Family Association? So NMFA, that really rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? <laughs> so what, what's your mission and what services do you offer for our military communities, Nicole? Absolutely. So NMFA has actually been around for 50 years. We are the leading voice for military families. We advocate for them on the Hill and we build programs to support them so they can lead their best military lives. The struggles of PCS season, poor housing conditions, healthcare issues, education and childcare for our military kids, you name it, we advocate to improve those issues for our military families. And not only do we work with our policymakers, but we also offer amazing programs like our Operation Purple Kids Camps and Military Spouse Scholarships. As a military spouse myself, I know firsthand how difficult it can be to start and maintain a career um, and all the things that you need uh, to be a successful professional. Uh, so our, one of the big issues that we advocate for is military spouse employment. Uh, we're trying to lower that unemployment rate of 24%. And that was pre-pandemic numbers. So mm -hmm. as you can imagine, I'm sure those numbers have <laughs> increased, um, you know, in the past six months due to the pandemic. So our scholarship program offers financial support for anything from your traditional post-secondary education, licensure, certifications, and even supervision hours as well as business startup costs. There are a lot of military spouses out there who start their own businesses. We can help with that. So also for our military kids, I mentioned our Operation Purple Camps. Yeah. These are free camps for kids to really help them connect with other military kids who go through those same unique challenges. 
And uh, last but not least, we also run retreats for families reconnecting after deployment and for those families of the wounded, ill, or injured. Wow. Good stuff, Nicole. Thanks for sharing that. Um, we'd love to hear more about you. Can you tell us about your role as a military spouse? What has life been like for you and your family and how you support your Marine? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so every military spouse is so much more than a spouse, right? Um, the military pretty much defines our lives right now, um, but it doesn't define our dreams, our aspirations, our life goals. And NMFA is with us every step of the way. As a military spouse myself, I love being a part of this crazy life, um, advocating for my fellow military families, especially. Uh, I've also traveled the world and lived abroad, a lifelong dream of mine that the military made possible. So when it comes to my husband and I, uh, you know, we support each other through all of this. The military life is full of its own unique challenges and we tackle those as a team together. Um, one of the biggest challenges we hear from spouses, like I mentioned earlier, is the struggle with careers. I consider myself lucky in the fact that I've been able to pretty much sustain a career in government relations with some sabbaticals uh, thrown in here or there, you know, product of PCSing, right? So, uh, and that's been incredibly hard. Um, I've worked my butt off to be where I am. And I think many spouses can say the same. Um, in the circumstances where it was difficult for me to find a job, particularly when we lived abroad, uh, there were so many great on-base opportunities for volunteering. So that's what I did. You know, I strategically volunteered to fill that resume gap. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm incredibly proud to be a military spouse, but I think most people know it's not easy, right? Um, my husband and I've been together for 13 years. Uh, we've had some amazing adventures, um, but also lengthy separations, which is hard on the strongest relationships out there, right? Um, we've been through long deployments and countless long exercises. And um, in terms of where we've kind of lived, we've been stationed in the capital, like the national capital region several times, which has been a blessing uh, for my career. Um, we've also been in Southern California at Camp Pendleton, and we were most recently in Okinawa, Japan. So we took full advantage of our three years living and traveling throughout Asia, and it will always be one of the highlights of our military life. Um, being stationed in a remote location, which I think a lot of families can say, uh, regardless of whether or not it was, you know, abroad, Oconus or Conus. Um, being stationed in a remote area really helps build strong friendships. And I'm so thankful for all the men and women across the services uh, we met um, when we were in Japan. Uh, they will be lifelong friends. And, you know, there's always something that you can count on in this military life. And I will say that's uncertainty. I didn't always deal with it as well as I can today, <laughs> but um, over the years, I've come to look forward to that uncertainty that lies ahead, um, knowing that my husband and I are on this same adventure together. Yeah, I agree. Wow. The change is the only constant in, in, uh, in this world, really, if you, if, uh, it, let alone the military. And so uh, you really have to get comfortable, well, get as comfortable as you can be with change. And uh, and we, we live that on a daily basis. And we appreciate your, your sacrifices as a, a military spouse. Uh, were you familiar with NMFA during all your different PCSs? Yeah, so funny enough, I've known about NMFA, um, gosh, probably since tw 2014. So I used to work for a global media company doing government relations there in the Washington DC area. And I was doing public policy work and they wanted us to find some military affiliated organizations to partner with. And so I cold called NMFA because I just Googled a bunch. And I mean, as a military spouse, there's still a lot that I learn 
every year about the military <laughs> and the community as a whole, right? So I cold called NMFA's head of communications, created this amazing partnership. We sponsored a float for the Veterans Day Parade in New York City. I mean, we did all these awesome um, projects and programs with NMFA when I uh, was working for this uh, global media company. And I fell in love with their mission. So I started volunteering in a personal capacity. So as a volunteer, you can help, um, you can help uh, with like our spouse scholarship um, applications. You can help kind of grade those. You're given a rubric. Um, you can do all this online in your personal time, even if you have a full-time job. Um, you can also man like tables at volunteer events. Um, or fairs happening on a base wherever you might be located. Also as a volunteer, I volunteered when I was in Okinawa, Japan, just by reporting back to NMFA headquarters about the issues, good and bad, that I was seeing or experiencing in my current location, just about the military life in general, whether it be, you know, issues with the housing, you know, are there mold problems? What about um, you know, the moving contractors, you know, when you're PCSing back and forth, are there issues there with um, DMO or, you know, getting your car in and out of storage, all, you know, all these random issues that military is so unique and has to deal with every few years. So I did that when I was in Okinawa. And I've just been in love with the mission and everything that they do and stand for. So we got back from Okinawa back to the DC area a year ago. And, you know, I just got in touch with them and here I am. Awesome, that's an awesome story. Yeah. Um, it's, it shows you how just, you know, being involved uh, establishes those connections and, and you're able to, you know, be a part of the team now. So I'm, I'm glad, I'm sure they go, they're glad they, that they got you on the team now, so. Um, so your office works with the Exchange Retiree Advisory Council and I, wasn't really sure about that. I've only been on the job probably about three weeks. And so our retirees have a voice at the exchange. So all the retirees that are that are that are watching, we we we're advocating for you and we have a council representing your your uh your interests. Uh tell us about your role on the council and how it strengthens the exchange benefit. Absolutely. So NMFA is a member of the Exchange Retiree Advisory Council or ERAC. Again, love our acronyms. Um, they, uh, Iraq represents military retirees and their families. So as a member, we advise the director of AFES, as well as inform all the other members on issues we are hearing about from our current and retiree families. So we have our ear to the ground on issues that families are experiencing across the globe when it comes to the exchange. So um, that's been really helpful, especially as changes happen and new policies evolve. Uh, we also communicate to families about the exchange and issues or updates and changes coming up. So there's so much information out there on so many different channels that we really try to communicate as best we can to the families, whether through social media or our regular newsletter about updates they need to know. We thank you for your support um, on the Iraq death. That's a crazy acronym for sure. So, um, and you had, you had mentioned that you look forward to uncertainty. Well, welcome to 2020. That is the year of uncertainty. So how has COVID changed the way that your office works and how have you been working through this unexpected uncertain time? Great question. Um, wow. Like this year, right? Um, so much has changed in the past six months in this country. Um, and as an extrovert, this has been so weird for me. <laughs> I'm like, I'm alone all the time at home working. What is going on? Um, the whole process of telework was actually really seamless for us at NMFA. Um, because you know, I mentioned earlier, several of our employees telework full-time already. So we were already doing our weekly all hands video conferences. You know, a lot of us at headquarters would get into a conference room and then we would video 
um, you know, conference in our remote employees. So we could all still see each other's spaces and interact that way. We all had laptops we could take home. So the transition was incredibly smooth. And, you know, I'm almost embarrassed. I live only four minutes away from our office. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like in DC, having that kind of commute is unheard of. Um, so it's kind of funny because I didn't really have a commute to begin with. Um, so, but of course my commute from, you know, from my bedroom to my dining table is a lot better, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but NMFA employs a lot of military spouses, um, myself included, obviously. Um, and many of them have PCS. So they now have to work remote full time. Um, you know, we have employees in California, New York, Pennsylvania, Ohio. So we're really spread out across the country. And I think it was kind of easy for us to be like, yeah, we know this works right? We've been doing this for a while and um, it's been great. I've actually, there are some full-time remote employees I've gotten closer with now that we're all remote. Um, I find that I communicate, you know, a lot more with them now than I did before. Um, but I think it just goes to show that NMFA truly values what military spouses bring to the table and know that we need portable careers, um, military spouse employment contributes to military readiness. Most people know this. Um, you know, it contributes to the financial readiness and security of our families. Nicole, in your view, can you share what are the biggest issues facing military families right now, especially during the pandemic? Okay. Oh, let me count the ways. Um, <laughs> <laughs> So um, military families are used to uncertainty, right? But, and we've learned to thrive off of it. But Julie, like you said, you know, welcome to 2020. Our current situations are on a whole other level. Um, families are worried about their health, their safety, their financial security right now. And, you know, I don't think that's necessarily unique to the military experience either. Um, but families are dealing with a lot of questions they don't know how to answer right now. Um, is it safe for my children to go back to school? Um, is it safe to send my kids to daycare? Um, is childcare even affordable for my budget right now? I mean, we've seen at the CDCs on base, the child development centers, you know, they're at reduced capacity. They only have slots available for essential employees right now. Um, what if both, um, you know, if both um, parents work full time. What if they need to work outside the home? Um, not to mention, what about our guardsmen and reservists who are responding to COVID-19 right now? You know, are, are they safe? Are they being taken care of and all that that, you know, means? Um, not to mention, you know, deployments and exercises are still going on. Right. So spouses are trying to navigate this new normal, whatever that means, right? Um, but we continue to advocate for federal infrastructure and programmatic funding that benefits our military families. And this means, you know, I'm talking federal funding for schools, educating our military children. 80% um, of our military school age kids attend public school. Um, you know, we're advocating for expanded healthcare benefits. Uh, again, uh, even for our retirees, this has been a really weird time, you know, with a lot of health concerns. Um, and we are advocating for increased financial protections, um, just to name a few. So now more than ever, we know the support of organizations like NMFA, like AFES are so important. And that's why we've built programming to support our families. Um, NMFA, we pivoted an entire Operation Purple Camp program, um, which was happening all over the country, you know, starting around spring break through the summertime. Mm -hmm. um, we adjusted it to the virtual environment by hosting a virtual camp on Facebook, um, full of great activities and a platform, a platform for families to connect with others, no matter where they're located. Um, so we will continue to adjust and pivot our programs accordingly 
to meet the needs of our military families. Oh, that's great. That's great. And uh, so the exchange, I know you've been stationed in a few places and uh, the PX or the BX or whatever we decide to call it, uh, depending on, on what base you're on. Uh, it, it's, an, it's a huge, important non-pay benefit for our service members and their families. Uh, can you talk to us about some, some great experiences that the exchange is at, uh, that, that you've had with the exchange or how, how it's been there for you and your family? Yeah, absolutely. It's so funny that you said BX. I didn't know what a BX was until we got to Okinawa and the Lark Kadena Air Force Base is there. And I saw BX. I was like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> and my husband was like, it, you know, like there's the MCX, Marine Corps Exchange, there's the PX, this is the BX. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, <laughs> so, well, we all know the exchange provides valuable, whatever you call it, right? The exchange provides valuable savings for our families pure and simple, including my own. Um, every time family is PCS, we have to restock our homes with toiletries, cleaning supplies, kitchen basics. Um, oftentimes when, spouse, when the spouse is between jobs, um, the exchange provides a cheaper alternative for our family's needs. A convenient location for those working and or living on base. Um, and it provides consistency no matter where we end up around the world. Exchanges are vital for many of our service members and families stationed overseas. Um, like I said, we were in Okinawa, Japan. One of the very few ways we could get a taste of America was through food and purchasing food and clothing at the exchange. Um, you know, sometimes you just want a Reese's cup or a Subway sandwich <laughs> <laughs> or American beer, like good American beer. Um, and in case you didn't know, the best toilet paper comes from the U.S. <laughs> so, <laughs> is it two or three ply? Is it three ply or what? <laughs> right. These are important things. Um, many normal conveniences are only available at the exchange sometimes. So it's so invaluable. And, you know, I joke, but for real, like there's only so much, like you've got to get a little bit of taste of America when you're overseas. And the exchange is the way to do that. Awesome. awesome. I always try to plug in that your, that dollar that you spend at the exchange gets reinvested into our service members. So uh, we always try to plug that in there once we- And I think a lot of people don't realize all that, you know, a lot of the proceeds go to MWR, you know, morale, welfare, all those programs that you take advantage of on base um, and that go to benefit uh, so many of our families. That's right. Um, about 60% of our earnings go to those programs, 217 million uh, given to those or you know, reinvested in those programs in 2019. And then 100% of our earnings do in some way support the military community. So keep on go shopping exchange. with us. Yes. Go exchange <laughs> the toilet paper and that Subway sandwich yes. and make life better all around. <laughs> Excellent, Nicole. Thanks so much for sharing your experiences. Um, just want to pause for a second to look at the comments on our live feed and share some of that. So people are watching from all over the world. Um, we have Mehmet, I believe, watching from Turkey. Uh, Pierre says, thanks, Nicole, for what you do for our military families. We have Celia from Waldo Waldorf, Maryland. Jeffrey says, hello from upstate New York. My CLC classmate, hello from Papa Trot. I hope you know what that means, Nicole, because I don't know. <laughs> oh, no, no, that's that's my uh, CLC classmate. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. I'm no, like... Papa, Papa Trot, we love you. <laughs> Excellent. And then Jennifer says, 100% on the TP. We are definitely spoiled in the United States. <laughs> So before we wrap up, Nicole, can you let military families know where can they go to find out more about National Military Family Association and how can they get involved? Absolutely. So you can find our website at militaryfamily.org. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram at militaryfamilyorg and Twitter at military underscore family. You can sign up to be a volunteer, receive our newsletter, um, you know, just look around our social media accounts and our website for some great, um, important information. We're posting updates on a regular basis. 
Oh man. So Nicole, we had a wonderful, wonderful chat today. Thank you so much for sharing this great, great information. Uh, thank you and your family and your husband for, for your service and sacrifices. Uh, you spending time with us and giving us that information. Uh, I'm hoping that people will go and, and take advantage of those services that you guys provide. Uh, this means so much to our airmen, soldiers, sailors, Marines, and Coasties. Uh, we've got the Space Force uh, in there as well. We don't, I don't know what they're calling the Space Forces, but we got the, the, the senior list advisor for Space Force, so I'll ask them, what do we call the Space Force people? Uh, or, or airmen right now, they're all airmen right now. Right, airmen. I, I kind of like spacemen. Space men and space women. Oh yeah. yeah, I like that I'm a one. Big mm -hmm. fan of that, Nicole. I I concur. Yes. <laughs> so we'll we'll figure that out uh, in a, in a month or so. Uh, but we wish you all the best and continue to make a difference to our military families. Uh, if you don't mind staying uh, back a little bit, I, I want to get some information from you. But uh, well, thank you so much. We appreciate you. Thank you all. Thank you so much. This was great to be here. Hi. Thanks, Nicole. Right. Don't hang up. Bye, Nicole.